morning, everyone. In the Psalms, it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go up into the house of the Lord. It is good to be here. <laughs> I know some of you got tired of watching me uh, from my house on YouTube. <laughs> Well, I can see that uh, the chairs are spaced appropriately. So for those of you that were shy about dancing during worship, there's plenty of room now. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We're thankful, God, that your presence has never left us, has never forsaken us. Even throughout these difficult times, oh God, your presence is here. And you are near to the brokenhearted. You are with those that are contrite, that are humble. So God, I just pray that as we celebrate who you are this morning in worship, that you would draw near to us as you always are, but that we would also draw near to you. Yes. We just thank you, God, that we have the freedom to worship you. Sing with me, water you turned. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you Cause our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, water you turned, we'll sing it. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Cause our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power, our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, is awesome in power, our God, our God. for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then what could stand against? Then if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? God is greater, our God is stronger, 
that song because it just speaks the truth. <laughs> it's just that simple. Everything that we're singing there is found in God's Word. Our God is greater. Who is like unto the Lord? There is no one. He's stronger. Our God is here. It's going on right now. Lord, you know our nation needs healing. All that's going on right now. So much brokenness. So much strife. We need the oil of gladness to be poured out on us. Our nation, Lord, needs healing now. Our nation, Lord, needs your rain to fall on a dry and thirsty land. We need you, Lord. Come and heal us, come and heal us, cause our God is great, our God is stronger, God you are higher. going on, not just in our nation, but across the world, sickness, strife, division, confusion, anxiety, anger, if we as God's people don't cry out and intercede for our land. Oh, 
know, is it okay if we take our time and worship this morning? One thing that I've learned through the many years of being in ministry, specifically as a worship leader, that in spite of all the things that we can try to do in our flesh, whether it's you know trying to play fancy on the piano or sing the greatest riffs, or even come up with the greatest lyrics that are poetic. We can do all of those things, but if we don't have the Spirit of God, we have nothing. So the one thing that I've learned and I, I try to rely upon is the Holy Spirit because I think this will come as no surprise, but the Holy Spirit is the best worship leader I know. <laughs> So I figure if I can try to listen and try to hang on to him, he won't lead us astray. Amen? So kind of having one of those moments right now, just trying to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because as much as we come to church to be replenished and filled once again, We also come to do the work of the Lord. And although we may be here this morning confined to these four walls, there's no such restriction upon the Spirit of God. So I, I truly believe that even spending these few moments interceding for our nation during these difficult times, can yield infinite results. Do you believe that with me? Amen. Because sometimes God doesn't look for the masses to turn towards him. He's just looking for a few that will agree and stand in the gap. And he'll see that and he'll say, you know what? I, I could work with that. That's why in scripture it talks about two or three gathered in his name. Aren't you thankful for that? Pretty much we could hit that quota every time. <laughs> I hit it just by myself with me, myself, and I. Oh. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit. Oh. But God could work with the praises that are lifted up from a small town called Thank you. That's who God is. What was the city of Bethlehem but a small podunk town? God looked on the map and he said, you know what? That's going to be a good spot <laughs> for the birth of my son. So why not Lincoln? Why not now? Send your fire, send your rain, holy Lord, in Jesus' name, lose the wind that brings heaven's change. Fire, send the oil, the wind, and rain. Send your fire, send your fire, send your rain. Holy oil, holy oil, in Jesus' name. fire, send the oil, the wind, and rain. Come on, lift your voice to sing it again as intercession. Send your fire, send 
of that song says I lift my hands to believe again I'm sure many of you even from experience know how true that is sometimes we're on the mountaintop but sometimes we're in the wilderness in a dry place and we need to believe again you are my refuge. You are my strength. And then it says this line, which it, it literally just dawned on me this morning. It says, as I pour out my heart, these things I remember. There's one thing that we can do as believers. Of course, we can pour our hearts out in love and in devotion. But there's another aspect of pouring out. We can pour out the brokenness. We can pour out the doubt. We can pour out the fear so that when we pour that out, our hearts are in a place 
to again remember you are faithful you are faithful still there is a healing oh there it is his love is deeper than the sea his mercy is unfailing his arms a fortress for the weak so let faith arise As I pour out my heart, these things I remember. Yes, there is that flows from Calvary's tree, or a fountain, a fountain for the thirsty. Your grace that washes over me, let faith arise. Yeah. 
ask, Lord, for you to heal our land. We remember, Lord, with confidence. You are faithful. You are Well, good morning, New Song. Uh, Happy Sunday to you. I'm so glad uh, to be able to be invited into your your homes uh, this Sunday morning. As you know, we are having a church. We're using all of the social distancing and, uh, you know, the sanitizing things to get ready for people and so on and so forth. But we are both live and uh, uh, in, in person at the church, just a few of us over there. We can only have 50 at a time, but, uh, you know, an opportunity to get on the website. You'll see what we're doing there. You can get your ticket and so on and so forth. And as we change with the, the times and how it's working, we're going to be able to uh, maybe go with two services or whatever we need to do in order to accommodate that. But uh, I'm so glad that you're here. We, uh, uh, you know, it's not business as usual, and that's the name of my sermon today. It's not business as usual. It's different. It's, it's time to call upon the Lord with, with all of the unrest and ethnic uh, relations that are just, you know, bubbling over in many parts of the country. We need to understand that as Christians, we, we can't stay silent. But, uh, you know, as, uh, but I'm not going to respond in a political way or take sides or this. I, I just, there's too much to understand. Uh, I don't prepend, pretend to understand what the issues really are. And, uh, you know, but the, the, the root of the protests and the unrest and all of that, I, I just don't quite understand it. But I know this, that whatever your viewpoint needs to be, I'm convinced that whatever happened to George Floyd is totally unacceptable. And number two, the church is the answer to that kind of anger and that kind of misuse of power and so on and so forth. I, I just want to say, as Christians, we ought to set the pace by repenting of our sins in whatever areas they may be, and turning from our wicked ways and asking God to hear from heaven and heal our land. And that's our text today, Second Chronicles 7, 14. We're going to get back to it. But in the history of America, there were times when we were in trouble as a nation. Uh, there was unrest, much like there is today, and when we did not see eye to eye, and there was, you know, we were fractured in terms of our, our, our political beliefs and, and, and all of that. Uh, it just seemed like when brother rose up against brother, when relationship with God was abandoned and people were, were doing their own thing, uh, when moral decay and decline was rampant in the culture. In those times, if you look closely, there were corrective moves of God, revivals that swept the nation where people turned their hearts to God by the hundreds, where the whole nation was impacted and the, the churches were full and the jails were empty. Violence was scarce and the police had little to do with the crime rate coming to a standstill. I would suggest to you that America is once again in need of revival. And when God moves, you see everything changes. We need a right revival. I need a personal revival. New Song Church needs a revival. Lincoln needs a revival. Uh, you know, Roseville and Rockland and Wheatland and, and Sheridan and all the places around here. Uh, you know, Yuba City and, and Marysville and, uh, you know, Lord, and certainly California needs a revival. And America needs another revival. So our text this morning on the screen, you can read along with me. You can grab your Bible uh, if you've got it and read from uh, the New Living Translation, Second Chronicles 7.14. And this is needs to be burned into our spirit. And so if we're memorizing it and and putting it up somewhere where you can see it often and refer to it. Uh, It would be good for us to live by this particular scripture. Then, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. And that's what needs to happen today. 
We can't sit idly by and say it's someone else's problem. We have to take a good look at our own heart. Find out what, what, what we're really like. Past the facade, that, the facade that everyone else sees and into our heart. Where who we are when no one else is looking and will ever find out what's going on there. Who we are then. And we need to repent of our wickedness because God says that there's, there's stuff there. And it's, and it's when we do that and get honest before God where he will hear from heaven and will heal our land. And so we need to pray for revival. Father, I pray today that the words that I speak would be the words of your heart for our people. And all that are listening today, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would get a hold of us like never before. And Father, don't let us be callous to your word, but let us have tender hearts toward what you're saying. And I'm asking, Father, that you would come and you would change my heart. You would cleanse me from my sin. And you would, Lord, set my feet on a, on a, on a path of understanding and a, uh, and a path of righteousness that would be pleasing to you. And Lord, do that for everyone that is listening to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you're looking at your notes, you'll be able to find them. If you're on uh, online, you can find the notes there on uh, the website right adjacent to uh, the the middle of the page where it talks about the YouTube or actually the church online uh, broadcast. You can find them there. Not sure if they're pasted close to the Facebook um, but you uh, uh, webcast uh, link, but you can find them in the middle. And I advise you, if you want to, you can go ahead and get to those every week before, uh, before the webcast comes on. And you can download those and follow along, take notes. So A section says we need another revival. You see, the Bible says that, that Christians hold the key to a move of God. It's it, the, the type and variety and the, the move that, that changes the culture of our nation. We need that kind of revival. I mean, number one, we need all of what happens when God sends a revival. What happens when, when God sends revival to a, a people, a nation, a country? First of all, people get saved by the hundreds. And then maybe, you know, in the larger centers, uh, you know, literally by the hundreds and by the thousands. And they start living the way they ought to. Whole areas can come to faith when revival hits. Casual Christians, the ones that are that are kind of on the fringe, they're half in, they're half out. They they know God, but they're not totally sold out to Him. When revival hits, they 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 catch fire and they begin to be totally on fire for God. People will change priorities to live a life that counts for eternity. Uh, they will have the heart to do the right thing and start to live by the golden rule that is do unto others that you would have them to do unto you. There's lots of joy and peace and laughter and contentment when you're living in the sweet spot of, of life. That's the center of God's will. In fact, the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Uh, God wants you to have joy and he wants you to be strong. So in his presence is the fullness of joy and the joy of the Lord is your strength. Those are God's promises and and I, I'm just saying there's a difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is depending on your circumstance. You can be up one day and down the next, depending on what's going on in your life. But the joy that God gives is way down deep in your heart in a place where no circumstance can touch it. And everything, uh, you know, everything that comes in life is met by the confidence and trust in an almighty God who does all things well. Nothing can take away that joy and contentment by knowing that God is in charge of your life and in the end we win and spend eternity with him in heaven. And so there's, I just want to say there's nothing like living a life where the knowledge of your sins are forgiven and you're living a life that's pleasing to God and you're in fellowship with him. When you live your life with God's hand of favor on you, it's the best kind of life you can live. It comes to letter B, what do we do uh, to see revival come to our city? The first thing we need to do is we need to pray for personal revival. You can only control one person. That's that's you. I can only run control uh, the thoughts and the actions of one person, and that's me. We ought we, we ought to stop saying we ought to pray and seek God and repent of our sin. We really need to say I will pray, seek God's face, and repent, and ask God for forgiveness for me as a person. Isaiah forty thirty one. In the New King James Version says these, 
these words. Uh, but those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You see, waiting to, upon the Lord is the key to spiritual strength. There's certain things that only come. An understanding of who he is when you spend time in his presence. An understanding of his words and his promises. And the key to strength when we spend time in the word. When we stay in his presence until he comes to us. Uh, like the day of Pentecost, it was, you know, uh, uh, we talked about that in a recent sermon here. But they spent in the upper room, they spent t- 10 days and nights in God's presence, just waiting for the promise of the Father, waiting to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And what happens when we wait in his presence, we get rebaptized in his presence. There is a, a greater sense of who he is when we spend time in his presence. And we, we end up with, with the tank that is, is a little empty. I, you know, we talk about this a, long, a lot of times. Why do we re- need to be refilled uh, with, the, with the Holy Spirit? It's because we leak. When we just live life, uh, there is a certain dissipation of the power of God as we, as we walk day by day that needs to be refilled. That's why, uh, you know, our, our walk with God is a daily walk. You know, we need to spend time uh, you know, somebody, you know, often asks me, how long do you spend devotions? Well, the answer is until we have spent time in God's presence. Otherwise, it's like meeting somebody at Starbucks or Pete's or, or Dutch Brothers or wherever you go, but drinking your coffee and leaving before your guest arrives. In that case, there's no fellowship. There's no conversation. There's no encouragement. There's no meeting of the minds. There's no understanding of another perspective. And so our devotions are a time when we set aside time to be with God. We don't just go through the motions and never spend time in his presence. Just the motions offers you very little spiritual benefit. You see, the point is that God wants to fellowship with us and we were intended for fellowship with him. Our days are infused with his presence and his power, his wisdom, his knowledge, and his favor when we spend time with him. To, to, to have, to have uh, you know, to, to move toward re- revival, we have to get to the place where we can no longer live with, without what only God can bring. What only God introduces us to in his presence, without the presence of God that we actually sense and feel. And I, I, I don't want us to go by feelings. That's not really what I'm saying. But there is a chance or there is a time where we're in God's presence and we feel and we know that he is present. And so God really wants to have fellowship with us. We were created for fellowship, in fact. That's a, that blows me away that, that the, the God of the universe actually wants to spend time with me. And he wants to spend time with you. And that ought to make you rejoice. Because not everybody wants to spend time with me and not everybody wants to spend time with you. So when we're heading for revival and we're saying, God, would you do something in our life? We have to, number two, repent of any known sin. To approach a holy God, we need to have clean hands and a pure heart. And, and, and you know, it's not that God condemns us. He allows for repentance, but he wants that to happen. Psalm 24, 3 and 4, it says it this way in the New Living Translation. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who, who may come into uh, stand in his holy place. That's referring to going to church in the Psalms. They ascended the hill to Mount Zion. And, uh, and so he's saying, who can come to church? Who can travel the road that leads to his holy place? And who can stand in his presence and have communion with him? And it says, verse 4, only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies. Psalm 66, 17 and 18 says, For I cried out to him, that's God, for help, praising him as I spoke. And in verse 18, If I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. So, if you want to be close to God, you have to keep short accounts. The operative word is, there's no unconfessed sin. It means that, you know, we're going to have times when we mess up and we blow it. But we, we repent, we keep short accounts as soon as we mess up. Oh God, forgive me. Uh, you know, cleanse me. 
so that I can come into your presence. And number three, we have to know that revival is a sovereign work of God. It's not something that we plug in the formula. We follow the rules and, 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 and doing what we should in terms of the steps and he will send revival. But I do know this. It happens when we consistently pursue his presence for as long as it takes to get into his presence. Let her see God is welcome. He, God comes where he is welcomed and celebrated. Number one, and this is really, really important to know this and understand it, to seek God is to find him. The word says that if you seek him with all of your heart, he will be found by you. It says in another place in James, draw near to him and he will draw near to you. Matthew 7, 7 and 8 says, keep on asking, asking for revival, asking for your friends to become uh, saved, your family to become Christians, and you will receive what you ask for. In other words, we pray and then we keep on contending for our answer to prayer. It says, keep on seeking to finish the verse and you will find, keep on knocking. It means literally knock and keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. That's the promise of God, folks. It means when you ask and keep on asking, you'll receive it. When you, when you keep on seeking, you'll find it. When you keep on knocking, the door is going to be open to you. And to everyone, I love this, everyone who asks receives. It's not just a, a special few saintly people who have it all together and their life, you know, is, is a glowing report and they never mess up and they never have problems. But it says everyone who, who, who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Quite a promise. So we do that. We contend for an answer to prayer. I like this prayer in Habakkuk chapter 3, and this is the New King James Version. And I want to read it to you. It says a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on Shignioneth, whatever that means. Sorry, uh, I won't try it again because I'll pass it up again. I practiced it before this, I promise, but I still didn't get it right. So verse two, let's continue. Oh Lord, I've heard your speech and was afraid. Oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. He's saying here, I've heard of your judgment on Israel, Israel when they abandon you, Lord. I've, I've heard your speech about that. And I was afraid because we are in the middle of that kind of thing again because we're far from you right now. And he was praying for his, his country the way we ought to pray for America right now. And the prayer ends with, in wrath, remember mercy. Lord, have mercy on America today. We are far from you, but God, we are seeking your face and we are asking for your mercy. We're asking for revival. And we understand that we don't deserve it. We deserve judgment, but Lord, have mercy. Because there's people, Lord, who are hungry for your presence. And number three is hunger for God's presence. Lord, there's people who hunger for your presence. Don't abandon them. But in the middle of the years, and I, I, I take that as as the years pass and we haven't seen the answers to our prayers. And it seems like maybe fewer and fewer people are really seeking you now. Will you turn their hearts toward you? Would you turn the hearts of America who have grown cold? Would you turn them around toward you? When it seems like our prayers for revival are less energetic and fervent than they were at one time when it seems like our prayers are falling on our feet in front of us and nothing really has happened. Help us to remember that dry wood catches fire the quickest. And we've heard, Lord, he's talking about, we've heard all of the things that have happened in the past. We've heard of your moves, oh God. We've heard of the remarkable things that have happened elsewhere. We've heard of of, of the revivals in the past of John Wesley and Charles Wesley. We've heard of George Whitfield and we've heard of Billy Sunday and we've heard of 
the Pensacola revival. We've heard of, of the Azusa Street revival. We've heard of what you did in, in Argentina. We've heard of what you've done in, in the Hebrides Island. We have heard of in Argentina, we've, we've heard uh, people like Claudio Friedzen, who in many ways is considered one of the fathers of revival. And he carries the presence of God like few others on the planet. And he said, and I, I was watching him last night as I was praying through what I was going to say today. And he was, and it was at some kind of revival conference. And I, I don't know, it's on the internet. You could probably find it. And in the middle of it, he said, the Lord had spoken to him in the middle of his preparation for whatever they were going to do in this particular conference. And the Lord spoke to him and said, do you want it? Meaning, how bad do you want the intimate communion with the Holy Spirit? How bad do you want revival? How badly do you want to know God? How greatly do you want to love him? You know, are, are you willing to, to, to pray the price? And, uh, and I, I, I listened to that and I began to get emotional because his ministry has meant a lot to me and my family in the past. And I can, I can remember uh, when it touched my family. I, I remember a time where it was at Trinity Life Sunday, and some of you out there are going to know exactly because you were there during this time. And Claudia was there, and I don't know how many days he was there, but he, he was staying over the weekend, one week, and then yeah, I think he was till, till Wednesday or something, and then he had to go someplace else. But uh, it just so happened that, you know, he uh, he began to pray for the people that were there for them to receive a greater measure of the Holy Spirit. And I can remember, uh, you know, I was in charge of, of music at that particular time in the choir. Most of them got slain in the spirit. That was okay because there was a place for them to sit down in the choir loft and so on. But uh, when he began to pray for the orchestra, I was very concerned because very expensive instruments instruments were in our hands and he began to pray and he, he, he flung his hand like this and the, the Holy Spirit hit that place like a ton of bricks and 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 most of the orchestra was was out of their chair and on the floor and remarkably no horns got dented and nothing got messed up and I was saying God that's got to be you because in the natural there would have been you know many thousands of dollars worth of damage to instruments and so on and I I, I was was the guy that was I uh, kind of looked like this when Pastor Lebec was looking for somebody to take his place when he was going on a trip or preaching in another place. Uh, it seemed like whoever went by his office at the right time got the nod. And I happened to be the one that was cruising up. I needed a question answered for something or other. And he said, hey, I, I want you to preach next Sunday. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, Pastor... Here's Claudio Friedson, one of the most uh, incredible, uh, you know, uh, uh, speakers on the planet. And 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 then I speak the, the week after he is is here. And I'm thinking, you know, this is not right. I preached about once a year back those in those days, maybe twice on a good year, three times, but not often because uh, there were so many great preachers on that staff. They all needed a chance. And and the greatest of them was, uh, was the senior pastor, and everybody wanted to hear him anyway. He didn't want to hear folks like us. But I remember something that happened. And I, and I want it to happen in your experience. And I, want, I don't want to go back to the past, but I want the kind of thing that happened here to happen in our church now. And I, I, I tell you because I'm just an ordinary guy. There's nothing special about me. But there's a really something special about the God we serve. And so here's what happened. Claudio heard that I was, I was going to preach the next week. And, and uh, he didn't know if I could preach or not. But he came and he laid hands on me. And there was a, it was like, like pouring gasoline on a fire. Just something erupted in my spirit. And God gave me the message and the fire was burning so strong in me. It was the Holy Ghost. It wasn't me. And I began to preach the next week. And we preached back those days. We had three services. We had one at eight and, and one at uh, nine and one at 11. I, you know, we had a short one, you know, 
anyway, pastor, whoever was preaching would come over. The second one was started, we would have worship and, and he would come through uh, the door, you know, after worship and would preach and so on. I remember preaching the second service. I don't know who prayed, preached the first one. And I, I don't even know what was going at that particular time. But And, and God began to, you know, I, I mean, I, I didn't preach any eloquent message. I didn't have it in me to do that. But I gave an altar call and I asked for people that wanted more of God. And they were so hungry and we were laying hands on people at the altar. We had a large altar and a lot of room and we paid uh, for people around the altar and, and they were slain in the spirit. And I, I just, that's just what happens sometimes when the power of God hits a person. It's our old flesh is too weak to stand up in the presence of God. It's not a sign of uh, a spirituality or anything. It's just what happened. And they're lined up on the altar and they are lined up down the aisles and they are lined up at the back of the church and it's time for the next service to start but nobody could get in to the place and i and i'm i'm kind of looking around uh, saying lord what are we going to do well we're going to wait on you and 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 so you know people got you know got up off the floor eventually and <clears throat> and we could get people coming through the door and finally we we got the second st service started and I, and, and it, it, it happened the same time. Fact is it was so packed because there was people that wanted to, to come for a second dose of the Holy Ghost and they wanted to be there for the second one. Preach a very simple message. Uh, I think I could have banged two rocks together and said, who wants more of Jesus? And they, a, a touch from heaven and they would have come. And I, and I'm saying, I I don't want to read about that sort of thing happening in other places with other ministries. Uh, and it is happening where people are praying and seeking the, glory, uh, the Lord. And I don't want to read about it in someone else's church or, or, or in another city. I want revival again in my heart. And I want God's overwhelming presence in this church. And I want the same thing for all of you. And some may say, I'm not sure that I want that kind of relationship with God. I'm not sure that I want to give up everything that I'm involved in right now. And I want to tell you what you give up in order to serve God is nothing in comparison to what you gain by getting close to God and living a life that's righteous before him. So I encourage you, the presence of God is an acquired taste. The more you're in his presence, uh, the more you will desire it, the more you will hunger for it. The Bible says it this way, Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is the best thing that can ever happen to you. When he comes into your, into your uh, to life, you're going to live the very best life uh, possible. And so starting this Sunday, I'm, gonna, I'm calling for 40 days of prayer for the presence of God to come and revival to come to Lincoln and to all the surrounding cities and all the churches here and to our state and to our country and to the world. We are taking God at his promise. Lord, you said that if we would humble ourselves and we would, uh, those that are, are, are called by your name, if we would humble ourselves and begin to pray, and we want to do that and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, we want to repent of everything that is not right before you. Then you said, Lord, your part of the deal is you would hear us from heaven and you would forgive our sins and you would heal our land. And Lord, our land need, is so broken, so fractured, so fragile right now. We need your strength to come. We are desperate for you. We need that corrective revival. We don't want to hear about it, but we want to be in the very middle of it. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And Father, I pray right now for everyone, Lord, that's in this place. The Father, for those that need to get saved, Lord, I pray. And if you need, if you're not right with God, then pray this prayer after me, and He will, uh, He will forgive your sin right now. And Lord, we're coming first of all for those who don't know You, and Lord Jesus, I come to You not knowing exactly how to pray, but I ask You to forgive my sins, cleanse my heart. Change my want to from wanting to do what's wrong to doing 
what is right. Lord, I surrender my life, everything I am, and everything I ever will be. I give it to you. Lord, take it and use me however you want. And Lord, I pray for all those that are far from you. They're just, they've, they've, they've said yes to you, but they're not living. They're dancing on the borders of Egypt. They are, uh, they got one foot uh, in the church and in the things of God and another foot in the world. Lord, they're half and half. They're lukewarm, the casual Christians. I pray, Father, that you would revive them in the middle of their years. Father, some of them don't know what it's like. They've never tasted and seen what it's like. I pray that you would come to them right now. Right now, you would reveal yourself to them. Catch them up into your presence and so they would taste and see. For those that aren't sure about committing 100% to you, God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would give them the courage to step out and come after you with all of their heart. And Lord, I pray for those that are uh, that you're speaking to right now and you're they're, they're saying, okay, I, I think that God, you're talking to me about 40 days of prayer towards revival and, and starting this Monday, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. In Jesus' name, we thank you for answering these prayers. Amen. Amen. Now, I want, uh, if you prayed any of those prayers and they represent where you're at, if you received Christ or you rededicated your life to the Lord or you decided that you were going to be sold out completely, I want to be your prayer partner with that. And if you would uh, do one of those things at the bottom of your, your screen, if you're watching the YouTube version or the online version at, uh, at uh, 10 o'clock, you can press the button, say, I received Christ. Or uh, you can go to at any time to prayer uh, and the, uh, the private chat there and... Uh, uh, if you're on the Facebook feed, uh, you know, you can send us uh, an email or you can call that the numbers and the contact information at the bottom of your page. We want to hear from you. We want to give you some, uh, some um, um, not equipment, but equipping materials that are going to help you in your walk with Christ. And we want to pray with you and we would invite you uh, to grab a ticket and come to our service live starting next week, hopefully God willing. Uh, if the uh, if you know the state is continuing to allow us to meet in such a manner, and now I I I want to bless you, and thank you for watching, and I want to bless you. Let this week be filled with opportunity. Let it be a healthy week. Let it be a week of healthing, of healthiness and healing. Let it be a week of 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 your presence and your favor. And now may the Lord bless you, and keep you and make his face to shine upon you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you his peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Just a note, we have closed on the property next to the church. We are now uh, landowners. Uh, we are calling it the center over there. And uh, one sign has come down. We've changed the door locks and we are ready to go. If you can help us, we want to paint it and clean it up. There's a lot of things that need to be done. Uh, let me know. We will do social distancing. You can wear masks and so on, but we could use some helping hands uh, as we move into that new property. In the meantime, until next time, Lord bless you.